And welcome Thank to you. the Museum of uh, the Islands of San Juan County. It just, I, it's my uh, pleasure, believe me. I'm so such honored. Such a thrill to have your work here and to <laughs> Thank see you. you and so I'm lucky to be here. Well, we're lucky to have you. <laughs> because so, I could be you know, dead right now. <laughs> all the awards that you've earned and now the Smithsonian Visionary Award to a ceramic artist, the first one ever <laughs> that the Smithsonian has ever awarded, the visions that you've had that we're actually able to see here today, um, are, the visions are amazing. Thank There's you. There's so much narrative involved with these pieces that we're just going to talk a little bit about okay. some of the work, not all the work, You're right. but just some of the work. And I, I would really like to start with the roll of the dice. Okay. That's the title. Yeah. yeah. Throw of the dice. Yeah. Throw of the dice. And let's maybe talk a little bit about your female images, um, the way that the painterly surface. Not, it's not also there's realism, but then there's not realism. So say a little bit about that. Ooh, okay, it's a lot. <laughs> well, um, the the whole show is uh, is called the world upside down, and um, I was just telling Maureen earlier that um, I'm watching news 24 hours a day in my studio because I can't watch film. Uh, one of the reasons is because you know, with film you have to look up to see who's talking, etc. So. I think it's, and then I, I also, I'm, I'm a news junkie, and I take new, two newspapers in the morning that I read with four cups of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I go for pretty fast, believe me. And so I, I guess um, it's my fascination with life, and fascination, and th this fascination with news kind of gives me uh, imagery about the human population. And because this world in the last several years has been so crazy with COVID, you know, the war, uh, people homeless and uh, fires, um, you know, the heating of the world. And, you know, I, I see it in a way as being pretty tragic. And, and yet uh, with my own work, I, I try to present my feelings in a way that will force people to look at it. So I don't want to make them run away from it. But I would like to have them approach it with some kind of innocence and, and looking at it and, um, and then realizing what, what the meaning is probably behind it. And sometimes I don't really know the meaning of it myself. Um, but um, so, because I work fairly, uh, I mean, I work on a visual kind of thing where I like to see things change. And, and um, so this, this whole series is just like one thing after another. And a lot of times when I work, um, I will be working on one piece and all of a sudden I see I could do it this way. But instead of changing the piece, I go to the next piece and see. And I just kind of keep adding. It's kind of an additive process. Mm -hmm. And this particular piece called Throw the Dice is the meaning of it, I think. <laughs> I think is, um, you know, the world, the planet, the earth, could go either way. So it's throw the dice. And, and my figures are, um, I keep thinking of them as being fairly neutral. Mm -hmm. You know, they're kind of, um, I don't want them to be particular. They could be, they're feminine, but they also could be masculine. But there's something about the woman's body that gives me more form, like the, the breasts. Right. Yeah. Boobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they're, more shaped, so sometimes it's easier for me to um, use a, f a, a female figure. Also, you know, we have ways of working with the hair with women, so that gives me another form that I can add to the composition. Mm -hmm. So, that, so it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, earlier on, um, I was, you know, started out as a potter, and um, actually, I was going to be a uh, go into science this way. Came with the University of Washington right, for. Right. Um, but I uh, took a, a drawing class from John Constantine. Um, uh, his son, who is now, I think he's a big politician right now in Washington, yeah. Washington State. Um, but, and I took this drawing class from him, and, and I, I, all of a sudden, wow, this art is great. You know, it's fun, you know. And I, was, I used to go after hours to, to draw, and, um, and, they, and they were just mere f still lives. And um, so that's what got me into the art scene. 
And well, because in high school, or I did, really didn't do anything. And then grade school, I used to do the murals, you know, pilgrims murals, that kind of thing. Yeah. So that's how I got into art. But um, so when I got a, when I started moving out of pottery, which I loved, which is the thing that drew me in, trying to conquer that wheel. Um, I was also t uh, told to take, Bob Sperry told me, he said, Pat, take, take a lot of painting, because you've got to deal with the surface of the pots, you yeah. know, and I don't want you to just dip it in. I want you to, you know, you, got, you can't just hand in a glazed pot. So I was taking a lot of painting, and I kind of fell in love with uh, Magritte. And, and about that same time, you know, abstract expressionism was in. And that's um, and this huge influence from California was uh, in the Bay Area. It was with uh, Peter Volkus who really turned ceramics upside down. Right. Like he he's the one that really changed uh, from this kind of very utilitarian feeling, very calm feeling, and all of a sudden, you know, he was throwing these giant, you know, uh, stacks, and he would beat them with a stick, and then he'd pile them up, you know, and they got big, and he really changed the ceramic world. And not only in the United States, but elsewhere in the world, people start, wow, look at this guy, you know. Um, the next, next thing, and that was in the 50s, early 50s. And I got to the university around the 58. And anyway, when I started getting, sorry, you know, later on, I think I was around early 60s, um, uh, Bob Arnson in Davis, California, was, <laughs> <laughs> he introduced this other thing called funk art. I mean. He didn't introduce, there was a series of artists that did, and he was part of it. But the thing that um, I really um, thought about at that time was he was using realism. I mean, he was using um, objects, realistic objects, whereas um, Volkus was into the abstractness. And so things started changing into this era called the funk art, art movement down in, in uh, California, you know, around Bay Area. And that had a huge impact on me. And then I started getting interested in the figure. And I didn't know how, I didn't take any figure <laughs> when I was in school, because everything's, you know, throwing a brushstroke around. So I just started playing around with the figure. And uh, I was very, very, very scared of um, doing it. And so one thing that, uh, one of the objects that I made was a kill. And there was a thing called car kill. And I thought, well, I'll make a, you know, it's easy to make an arch and then carve the bricks in it. But I still was shying away from the figure. I'm getting totally off key. But oh, this is great because this is a beautiful history of oh. wherever you are. Oh, OK. Please. So anyway, I had to teach myself. Then the way I got introduced to the figure was I did a thing called a car kill. And what it is is um, a, a potter who makes ware and puts it on a cart, which is on a rail, and shoves it into the, into the kill. And that's called a car kill. So my version was a literal car. object, a car. <laughs> so I made my very first car, and it was going through a brick wall. And as it emerged on the other side, it became brick. The car became brick, and that was the beginning of a car kill. And another one I did was, um, uh, just a regular car, and I was like, wow, I can make a car. It make a, I can make it look like a car. So I was very proud of myself. So then I thought, oh, well, now i got to put a figure in. I was kept try, kind of denying it, that I had a you know, model a figure, a human figure. And uh, this, this memory came back in high school of this guy that I met in Spokane, where I grew up. And he was from California. Well, anybody from California is cool. <laughs> and I remember I said, and you're from yeah. <laughs> and so anyway, I asked him, I said, is you have a picture of your girlfriend? He says, yeah. So he pulls his wallet out, and he, oh. he pulls his wallet, and he pulls his picture of, of his, his girlfriend, and she's sitting on the, uh, on the foot of his car. And I went, wow, that's, and so anyway, when I was doing the car, I flashed on that incident when I was in high school. And so that was my very first figure. It was she was sitting on the hood of the car, and that started it. So once I did that first figure, it gave me confidence. And then I kept then I kept expanding the figure and using them. They're more literal. They're much more realistic. Right. And yes. um, and eventually I knew in my head that I wanted my figures to get modified. And I think the reason why is because we were living in a contemporary age, and I wanted it to fit the age. 
I didn't want it to be something that may be found in the Renaissance or something. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the reason. And since then, I've been trying to make it more, but I'm un unable to. <laughs> so anyway, um, so anyway, so we'll get back to this. And so what you see here is you know half the hemisphere of the Earth, and um, uh, and then the dice. Meaning, I'm not really sure if what's which way the world, the Earth will go. You know, it's a throw. Well, it's just the, the look on all these the faces. You know, it, it gives you. Uh, there's awe. There's fear. There, there's all <laughs> this beautiful human emotion oh, uh. once you go through all of these pieces and see them. One thing that um, I, I notice is, of course, the, the way that you're treating the surface and right. how you're, it's very minimal as far as the coloration is Oh, concerned. right, right. And I, for one, like that because it gives me a chance to uh, actually look at the form itself. Mm. And, and the imagery that you are providing us, the little hints here and there, um, is, is coming through for me better or okay. easier, <laughs> just, just yeah. to say easier, yeah. But mm. the, the fact of, you know, they're so expressive. One thing that I've been meaning to ask you uh, is, are you, do you make these uh, freehand or do you use a mold? Um, I, I uh, initiate it by building the first models. Right. And then I take molds from them. Okay. So everything is, yeah. um, uh, and, and I started doing that with the early work, you know, with the little figures. Sure. Because I found that if I started from, like, even those little eight or ten inch figures, yes. let's say you start at the feet and you start putting the little toes on and then you start building up the leg, leg, and by the time you get to the head where you're starting to put the eyes and nose, everything else is broken off. It falls apart because it's, you know, it's clay, it dries out. Yeah. And so it just falls apart. Okay. So at that time, I never, in fact, I remember when, in that, during those early times, they used to say, well, if you use a mold, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not handmade. Mm -hmm. And they used to laugh at the old lady potters that used to go down to the pottery, remember pottery, or uh, what's that name? Dung yeah, no, 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 no. Um, uh, there was that commercial. Well, anyway, so, uh, but one of the reasons is for that reason. Um, so um, everything, yeah, so I do, I make the first models and then I take molds from them. Yeah. But that was the funk movement. I mean, there's so many uh, images uh, from the funk movement that I remember that were all from, they would take molds of things. Yeah, and, oh yeah, and yeah. That was from, Even from real things, yeah. yeah. exactly. <laughs> that was, my ceramic work for many, many years was that, yeah. yeah. So, um, one other thing that I did notice was the lips of your figures. Mm -hmm. They're glossy. Oh, I guess because it got spit on them. <laughs> I love, Simple I love as that. that. <laughs> They're all glossy. It's really, is that, this is blue? That one's not. That's not. I forgot. But that's not glossy. <laughs> I, I, I know, just probably just a little side note, right? But that's kind of what I was looking at. Okay. And the beautiful juxtapositioning, uh, how you, everything is moving, everything, all <laughs> these, they might be static, right? But they're all, there's a lot of movement yeah. involved. And this one, this one's called Explosive Situation, and this really has a lot to do with the Ukrainian situation right now. And um, so what you see here is uh, the uh, ball, uh, ha hammer and sickle, and... Um, the rockets, so, and what she's doing is she's kicking the ball away. She's kicking the earth away. And um, so. <laughs> Incredible. Again, there's just so much in all of the figures. There's so much momentum and movement going on uh, for a piece of clay. And the, the, the expressions on the face. <laughs> Do you play with that a lot? Do you? Uh, yeah. I, you know, and here's this mask, you know, talking about COVID. Right. Um, well, I guess so, Marty. <laughs> so I see um, this uh, image of the rocket um, pretty much. There's quite yeah. a few. What, can you talk to that a little bit? Let's oh, I think it's a lot of it has to do with, well, like in this, this case, it's like warfare. But also, um, 
you know, I'm talking about this kind of the world upside down. I'm talking more about, you know, looking from outside onto the earth and seeing what's happened. And um, so the things that are happening now in this world is uh, people going off in space and discovering new territory. So in a way, it's kind of like, uh, in some of the cases, I feel like we're fleeing the world. We're looking for new territory to, to expand on besides living on this crazy earth. And that's what it's about. And I, I think of these figures as human consciousness, you know? And um, so they're, they're kind of like you and I, kind of imagining all this crazy stuff that's happening. And uh, this particular piece, um, uh, it, it winds up, it, it's, it's all these things like the, um, the political crisis we had in Washington, D.C., and the guns and the, 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 the fish that are, can be dying and our, our forests that are being cut down and um, COVID, and it's all going, it's all spinning around this earth. You know, it's going, going into the earth um, or onto the earth. And so what you see beyond the earth is this kind of universe. Uh, and like you'll see spaceships here. And um, so this, um, this, this path of what's happening on the earth comes all the way around and it comes down to the oil girders and the oil spills and uh, um, we have uh, Trump here. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> and so it, 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 it falls, you know, all these things that we're having a crisis over right now. That's what this is about. Is this homelessness here with the is it tents or something? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Black, Black Lives Matter, the whole mm -hmm. that. And the <clears throat> uh, ships that got, um, like in the Suez Canal, they got. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, I just kind of put all these things on there that all the problems that we're having, and in a way, you know, this is the escaping. We can escape to new territory. I think that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Not sure, but <laughs> it's very expressive. Absolutely. So your work is always encompassed um, the uh, uh, socio-political. Psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> but yeah, the, the so, socio-political uh, women's, you know, uh, uh, concerns, issues, and it's always said something to us. It's never just a, a figure. It's always that figure is always telling us a story and giving us a narrative. Yeah, about, I think so. Yeah. That's, I think, what you're most, uh, I mean, I, I've, I've known your work for many, many years. And Don't say many, many, many. A few years. I look at books, you know, it's in the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, and it's always done, um, this tremendous um, uh, narrative uh, in my way of thinking, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> so, um, let's, uh, uh, the other piece that I, love to talk about is which one this one right here oh, um, oh wild wow, booty yonder yeah oh so yeah I, it's again you know just the escape from the world and you know the, you know wild blue yonder that that uh in the wild this is a song you know and i think it's kind of uh this whole thing about escaping from this this kind of terror that's happening on the earth and so <laughs> So the escaping is, you know, you've got these figures, uh, the upside down, or the, you know, maybe she's pushing, or the yeah. character is pushing um, the earth and uh, kneeling on clouds, mm -hmm. uh, and this character here is just like tumbling away. Yeah, and and it's kind of in a sometimes maybe in a, a playful way but also you know it's kind of tragic because they have to leave right or mm -hmm. and and that i i think of you know they're figures but they're also just like thought processes you know like like i said human consciousness mm -hmm. that's with <clears throat> okay so they're all kind of the same you know idea about you know the world upside down and um you know, it's, she's very playful, but um, it's kind of like our reality. 
So, and like I said, what I like to do it, with my work is I like to kind of draw people in. Like, don't be afraid of it, you know, so that you can, you can walk up to it and then you can start looking at it and then realizing it's not just, you know, play, it's something else that's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. So the narrative really is, is something that um, we all know. I mean, we know what's happening in the world today, but the character draws us in. Right. And that allows us, well, first of all, to uh, become, uh, well, it's a human figure. Yeah. Or semi-human figure. It's a human figure. Yeah. And so that allows us to become more attracted to, to what we're looking at. Right. And as, I, as you say, look at the individual uh, elements of the piece. And, and as you say, not be afraid of it. Right. Yeah. And, 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 you know, so that, you know, when you look at these pieces, say, you don't, you don't, you know, you're not horrified, you know, when you see it. Right. And then when you start looking at it, then you start seeing the double meanings. Right. right. So, one, um, of course, we could go on, but one, before too long, though, I want to mention the work that you just installed uh, in Seattle called Dreamer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Thank you. <laughs> it's it's beautiful, and Thank I you. love the fact that you chose salmon um, on, you know, the characters on her belly, or right. its belly, and the feet are up in the end. There's a salmon on the feet, Foot, yeah. and, and then there's a salmon staring right at the character's right. face. and she's on her stomach uh -huh. looking at. Um, the reason I, the way I got that idea was that that particular building has a rain garden, and what happens is the, uh, the rain that comes on to the roof of that building, comes down and it goes into this rain garden and filters out before it goes to the ocean. So instead of going directly into the sewer, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, uh, uh, and contaminating the wa ocean mm -hmm. or the river, it filters it out through the soil. Mm -hmm. And so and when they told me that, then immediately I saw, <laughs> I saw fish. Well, yeah, salmon. <laughs> you know. Yeah, Which and, be, uh, and plus, you know, we're, here we are, you know, and it's just off the lake, Lake Union, so it, it just kind of, you know, all of a sudden they get a flash on these fish, so. Mm -hmm. And then um, she's sitting there, you know, admire, uh, looking at this fish that's jumping out of the water, mm -hmm. and it's like, uh, kind of like she's dreaming that maybe we can make our environment much more sa sane, right. you know. I got that immediately. <laughs> Did you? Absolutely. There was, but I didn't know there was a rain garden at that, at that property. Yeah, but that's how I flashed on that idea. It's just mm -hmm. like when they said rain garden, I said, oh. Yeah. The duh. Water, yeah, the water filter. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> so how was it? Uh, you were not, that's not a clay piece. No. It is aluminum. No. I'm doing, I'm, I'm in a possibility of another big commission down in Florida now. Oh. Because of that. So. And I can't talk too much about it because I haven't sure. signed a contract yet. Okay, but the working in that medium. Um, yeah, it's 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 the scale is pretty amazing. I mean, it's you know I think the head's four feet high, right? Yeah. So yeah, to work at that scale is um, it's kind of exciting. Uh huh. Yeah. Good. Uh, and um, so it's nice to have that opportunity to be able to do it. So. When you were doing, when you make it, obviously you. I had the fabric. Oh, I had a fabrication, right. uh, and they're now uh, the the last commission. They, they've done hundreds. It's a fab, uh, fabrication specialist in uh -huh. Seattle. Oh. Larry, Larry, do you remember a guy named Larry Tate? Yes. Larry's the one that he he was the owner. Oh. After, he and Gerald, Jerry, Gerald, McDonald, uh, Mc, Gerald McGinnis. And they were in next door in sculpture, and Ter Larry, and and Gerald was the sculpture student. And they, he, what happened is, uh, Larry retired, or not retired. He quit the job at the U as a tech next door to the sculpture, mm -hmm. and then he and uh, Gerald started this new business, which was building sculpture for oh. artists. So they, you did it there. Yeah. Oh wow. And they've done, you know, those guys have done over the years. They've done hundreds. I mean, yeah. maybe a thousand sculpture, public sculptures. Oh. And mine was the very last one they did, oh. and uh, I was I was so sad because they did such a great job and oh. <clears throat> they're real easy to work with. Yeah, yeah. So um, oh, cool. my, I have to attribute you know m most of it to 
to Larry and Gerald. Well, it's a spectacular piece. Oh, thank I'm you. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, it's at Vulcan Properties, is that what It's on, uh, yeah. It, it, um, um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's on Westlake and um, Republican, just okay. off Mercer. All right. One yeah. block right. south of Mercer. I, I, I think I know the building. It's just that I haven't seen that building with your piece in front oh. of me. Oh. <laughs> and I will soon, very soon. Yeah. Okay, so um, what else do you want to talk about? So we're pretty much, it's pretty much the same. Um, they're so beautifully expressive. I mean, look, this one, but let's just look at this. One. <laughs> I mean, look at it's called the weight of the world <laughs> and so I think it's fairly self-explanatory and this human consciousness is out floating in space is a, a life a life uh, saver what do you call these things uh, life ring, ring. Mm -hmm. so and then there's a, a rocket over here and she's just the, this consciousness is just kind of watching what's happening in the world this represents COVID. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. that represents COVID. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to do COVID very well, but. <laughs> it comes across. <laughs> it comes across. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Oh. And then this cat is pretty much, um, you know, it's kind of more of a, 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 a added kind of playfulness just about. It's called cosmic cat. You know, you think of cats at nighttime, and you know, or, and there's something a little bit uh, naughty about cats. You know, dogs are always kind of sweet, but cats are always kind of. <laughs> I know some naughty cats. <laughs> <laughs> so I use the cat as kind of a that kind of symbol. So I've just figured it would kind of fit in because they're usually running around at nighttime, and and it just kind of fit the overall imagery of nighttime. So. Um, Just the look on its face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> That's great. <laughs> and those are jars, right? Yeah, this is a yeah, lidded piece. Yeah. It's really funny. I'm not sure. You know, it, it's one of those things where I go back because I think of my roots as being in utilitarian work because I used to be a you know, potter. And so every once in a while, I, there's uh, usually if they're isolated figures, like that bird over there, you know, it's, you know, what is this bird, you know, so I want to make it, a, I don't know why I have this urge to make it a container. Who, kn who knows why? <laughs> and if I were a painter, I probably would do the same thing. I'd probably put a lid on it. <laughs> uh, you know, one thing that I'm um, interested in what you just said is these figures are a consciousness mm -hmm. and they're your consciousness uh, maybe maybe mine maybe I don't know yeah, I yeah. I think of it like everybody's in the same wagon yeah. you know around the earth and so yeah. it's what we're doing to the earth and what you know how we're all participating in it so it's it's kind of a, a I guess a, a a universal kind of feeling I think we all have I mean, maybe some people don't, which I would think would be odd, but the times are crazy. And I can't imagine most human beings on this earth not realizing it, you know? So that's... <laughs> and this brings it all home for us. It does. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Patty. Oh, so thank much. you. Well, thank you. It's my, pri my privilege to be here. And you guys put a really did a nice job on the installation. That's Peter. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.